welcome back. Today I'm going to do some preparation for this weekend's haul out. Uh, today is Friday, uh, tomorrow is uh, Saturday, it's a uh, haul out day. And I am going to uh, do an oil change and a filter change. Uh, but first, we're going to uh, warm the engine up because uh, there's no. Well, there is a drain plug on this, but uh, I am <laughs> I'm not going to crawl underneath the engine, so I'm going to pump the oil out. This is the cold start button. Give it half a throttle. Push this down. Close the lid. And flick the switch. No, oh, wait first. Turn on the battery. Then flick the switch. Just waiting for the temperature to rise a little bit. I don't want it too warm. And uh, you know, this is a pretty standard oil change, you know, like an ordinary engine. But there's a couple of small things that you know it's important to know, especially on the older. through that while I'm changing the oil. When you're doing engine maintenance or servicing of any kind, I think it's important to do a thorough uh, visual inspection. And that's one of the reasons why I like to have a clean and painted engine, because it's easier to spot leaks. And uh, last uh, spring, just before I splashed the boat, I realized that I had a pretty bad leak from the uh, heat exchanger. I, prior to that, I removed the heat exchanger from the engine and uh, did a thorough cleaning of it. And when I did that, I kind of saw that uh, it was suffering from desinsinkification. And uh, some of the soldering around one of, uh, at least one of the uh, the barbs for the water hoses was actually cracked and <laughs> I tried to you know fix it but when I got into it I kind of realized that this is a this is a job for somebody who can brace and so I decided to get it to have it silver braced so a friend of mine actually volunteered to help me do that and uh, that was uh, quite successful. Uh, so, but I haven't really uh, looked. <laughs> I've, uh, you know, had my hand in there and just tried to feel around for water or uh, uh, wetness, but uh, it it's, uh, seemed dry. But now, when I'm going to remove the whole engine cover, a more easier access to the parts of the engine that is hidden when the engine cover is there. And uh, if 
the heat, heat exchanger have have a small leak or something, uh, I would be it, it will be easier, uh, easy, quite easy to spot because you will have the telltale sign of water uh, running down the paint. So that's why I like to have a painted and clean engine. Now. You can see that the engine is uh, beginning to warm up. And so let's push to stop or pull to stop, should I say. Now let's talk about some, some of the specifics here. Uh, this right here, this is the dip dipstick, uh, the dipstick tube. Uh, on, in the service manual, it says that you should unscrew this and remove the strainer and uh, pump the oil out. Well, the problem is they uh, they revisit that on the newer uh, um, manuals uh, because underneath this there is a, a felt uh, washer. And uh, <laughs> if you don't get this as tight as you are supposed to, or there is something wrong with this washer, you will have uh, like a vacuum leak uh, because this is the oil pump. It's uh, an external oil pump. And if you get uh, like a vacuum leak or air leak uh, in this, you will actually, um, uh, suck air into the oil pump and you will lose oil pressure so that's an excellent way of destroying one of these uh, units so be mindful of that I, I'm not gonna uh, remove this now I'm going to try to just uh, extract the oil from the dip dipstick I don't like that because the dipstick uh, strainer I don't think that uh, that's going all the way down to the bottom of the oil pan, so but this shouldn't be a big problem. Uh, the ma majority of the oil should come out anyways. So uh, let's just see how this goes. Let's talk about some of the things that I, I need for this. Uh, obviously, I need an oil filter. This uh, looks to be the correct one. And I need a fuel filter. Uh, now, I'm a bit unsure about this, uh, now that I <laughs> look at it, because there's, there is actually two different kinds of uh, fuel filters on this engine uh, you can get. And um, I ordered this one because it came with <laughs> this o-ring. And the last fuel filter that I changed um, last spring, uh, the O-ring didn't come with in the kit, so uh, I just had to, you know, use the one that was already in there, and that was kind of cracked and yeah, pretty old. So yeah, I hope this uh, is the correct one, but uh, we'll find out. And uh, we need some oil. This is uh, 15W40. It's uh, supposed to be for the uh, uh, Volvo Penta older uh, engines. And we need this uh, fine piece of equipment that always, always, always leaks. So uh, that's why I uh, diapered the freaking yeah out of this uh, out of my carpets and stuff. Yeah, so we need that, and we need a container for the old oil, and we need to glow up because oil it's not good for your skin. Not that I care, but I care. So, glow up guys, I'm changing your oil.
Oh, uh, that's a bad fit. <laughs> Should be about 2.8 liters of oil in this, so uh, and the dipstick mark was full, uh, so we had, uh, it hasn't used any oil. So I'm kind of curious uh, how much uh, oil I can get out of this. Uh, that's obviously including the filter. It's going to take quite some time. I'm glad I warmed the engine up because this is yeah. If I were to do this more often, I would probably splash on some uh, on a electric pump unit. But, uh, yeah, this is fine for once a year. Yeah, I think I got it all. This is a 4 liter container and uh, yeah, looks to be right around 2.8 including the filter. So let's see, it's good. This uh, also has a little o-ring on it, a little, uh, well I think actually it is a some kind of fiber washer maybe. Be careful, do not lose that one. Nothing on the dipstick. I think we're okay. So let's see if we can get this filter to spin off. Hardest part <laughs> getting this out of here without spilling too much dinosaur juice. Now, I could have removed those air, air filters, but I seem to have misplaced my flathead screwdriver. Well, it's not mis it's actually not misplaced. It's just at home. So yeah, fun stuff. Come on, come on. You're nearly there. Oh, be friendly. Come on. You. Oh. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Doesn't seem like I spill too much. <laughs> the engine is actually spilling more than me at the moment. Yeah, but you gotta remember, this old iron is from, I think its manufacture date is uh, something uh, 
July or August uh, 1976. So yeah, she's allowed to drift a little bit, but not too much. Also, this thing here, that's the bracket for the engine mounts. So this is actually uh, free rust proofing. Now, I'm not going to pre-fill uh, this filter, just because of the angle it's in. And I really don't want to spill any oil down in my bilge. Like that. And tights. And lights. Let's pour in some fresh oil. Come on now. Like this. This is where I need to be careful. Oh, it's going to be fun. Oh no, okay. Oh. We're a slow drinker, are we? Okay. Yeah. Do we dare? <laughs> we dare. <sighs> this is going to take a while. Because uh, last year. <laughs> I removed that, uh, that dipstick tube and uh, oil, spray, oil strainer, so I actually just filled straight into the crankcase. Uh, but since I found out that that is actually not a, a good idea, I figured out how to try this. It, uh, but uh, this is slow. <laughs> this is really, really slow. This is going to take a while, guys. change. I think I just, uh, just pop up some oil pressure. Let's see how this goes. pressure warning lamp came off and on again so that's good now let's see if we need to add some oil Yeah, 
That is spot on. the driver for for the uh, for the day Helping me uh, washing off all the grime and and uh, sea slime from underneath the, the boat. Yeah, going great. So uh, he's a good guy. We have to move some cars around. Um, this place is also an auto shop. Uh, and also a storage unit uh, facility. So there's a little bit of everything here. And uh, so yeah, we need some, uh, some movement of cars that is in the way currently. So uh, Johannes is just picking up his car so we can move this and uh, queue time lapse.
that's that. We got it all parked up. She's in her spot for the winter. We got her pressure washed. We got all the cars moved that needed to be moved. So the only thing left now is to flush the raw water side. Uh, I use uh, something uh, anti-corrosive and um, it's a solution that's called salty. It removes uh, salt residue and uh, that's gonna sit in there for a few hours and uh, then I'm going to flush it with uh, antifreeze. And when that's done, the boat is basically ready uh, for winter. Uh, yeah. So that's about it. I thank you all for watching and see you next time.